I've had a number of inquiries about understanding schedules in train controller from Railroad & Co. So I thought I'd produce a short tutorial about my interpretation of them. This is in diagrammatic form and I've used PowerPoint to generate it. So those of you from the commercial world will probably groan and think of that famous phrase of death by PowerPoint presentation. But I hope you find it informative and I've tried to keep it concise and will help you to understand what's going on. First of all, what is a schedule? While a schedule comprises in train controller of a series of blocks, which are a number of sections of track where one rail is isolated or there's a read or a contact, and these in turn have to have addresses so it can feed back through to the controller so the system knows where the train is and in what direction it's moving. And then there's routes. These are actually just plain pieces of track which connect with the blocks and also any points throughout the system. The points, of course, have got to have addresses. And then there's operations. Well, obviously the start and stop of a schedule, either by the mouse or keystrokes, as well as the monitor of where the train is, done via blocks, operation of points, naturally, to control the route, and also can train, control the speed of the train, whether it be specific or restricted, and naturally the signals as well. And finally, a response to things like stop, brake, or action markers, which are usually located within the blocks. There are different types of schedules within train controller. The most common is normal. So here on the left hand side block A would run through eventually arriving at block B. Block A has a green mark on the right hand side indicating its direction of travel and the one on the right has an orange marker. I've shown the red line because in fact you can actually run normal schedules in reverse but you don't repeat them. This is normally done by a shuttle type of schedule and it does, as it says on the tin, it oscillates between block A and block B. The markers on the left and right indicate that this is a shuttle operation and we can see it's a start and a finish on both sides and you can indicate how many times you want this repeated. And finally a circular shuttle where the start block and the finish block are exactly the same. It has to be a continuous loop. Looking at this one we can see there's green and orange on the right hand side. I Meaning it's going in a circular direction and would then start from A and eventually land up at A. And again you can repeat this. Individual schedules are just pre-planned routes that you use to determine where you want to move a train from one position to another position within your layout. But you can also use these as a means of moving, for instance, a train from block A all the way through to block M. Using these individual schedules, I've just compressed them horizontally and we can see that the finish of one schedule is the start of another schedule. Hence, we can get the train to operate all the way through these and generally move through quite a complex, if you want, system. It has to be the same train and can actually be started in reverse, but it's the easiest mean of getting from A to M. Successes are slightly different. A train starting in block A would eventually arrive in block C, shall we say. When it does, it turns a block orange, meaning it's arrived, and this in turn then triggers other schedules with other trains, ideal for a hidden siding, for instance. In this instance, there are different trains and they cannot be started in reverse. Well, I hope you didn't find that too boring and I haven't been trying to teach Granny how to suck eggs. If you want to see the results of these schedules and look at 3B, thank you for watching and bye for now.